The dangers of silver jewelry, sterling, etc. Coming up next on Body Piercing Basics, episode number 66. So stick around. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking at a level of expertise as someone who's been in the industry for well over 25 years. Today's topic comes from one of our viewers. Uh, they mentioned or asked if I could start doing a series on different types of materials uh, that are not suitable or suitable for um, uh, piercing uh, and even wearing in piercings after they have healed. Primarily, they asked about sterling or silver. When we are deciding what type of jewelry is going to work best or what type of material, we kind of go through two main or two or three main things. The first one being is how biocompatible the jewelry is or alloy. The second thing being is how durable that jewelry is. And the third thing being is how high of a polish can we put on that material. The reason why polish is so important is because it creates kind of a film or protective layer against any parts of the alloy leaking out into your body or into the piercing. So why is sterling a terrible choice? There's five or six main reasons for this. The first one being is that a majority of what you're going to find in the market for any type of piercing, mainly ear piercings, but they do make stuff for other place or other parts of the body, or they use it as additional things like ends and uh, things that hang off and charms and all kinds of different stuff is that a majority of it is sterling. And the reason why it's sterling is it's not, it's a lot more durable than pure silver would be. When we say sterling, it's sterling nine to five, meaning it is 92.5% pure silver with 7.5% of it being other materials. Those other materials are generally more than likely copper for durability and nickel for to give it more of a shine. The problem with these two materials is the most common metal allergy on the planet is nickel. No way around it. The other problem is, is copper does not react well with uh, the body either. So both of those things are not biocompatible as say high grade titanium would be, or impl even implant grade surgical stainless steel uh, that contains less nickel than that. So what you create is a situation where you are more than more likely to have an allergic reaction to that material even after the piercing is healed, just from the exposure. The other problem with sterling is it's only tested for the purity of as far as how much silver is in it. As uh, we really don't always know exactly what some of those trace elements are, and we don't know what type of reaction you're going to have. You're kind of in a buyer's beware market. Uh, a lot of times, Manufacturers will just mark something as sterling or they'll mark something as silver. There's no specification on how much silver, how little silver, etc. Plus, there's always a possibility that you're just allergic to silver. The next one is tarnish. Uh, all silver tarnishes when it comes to contact with uh, oxygen in the environment around it. That tarnish can create a film around the jewelry that you could have a poor reaction to. Uh, that varies from person to person. However, it does create an uneven surface. So the movement of the jewelry and et cetera could agitate the piercing or create little pockets for bacteria and other things to collect in. The fourth thing is the metal is generally, even the alloy is too soft, meaning 
that it's easy for it to become pitted or scratched or et cetera. And then you have that situation with the tarnish where you have bacteria and other contaminants collecting in that, those little pits and little scratches and then causing issues. The fifth thing being is because the jewelry is so soft, you cannot create that hard finish, that protective layer that's going to isolate uh, the parts of the alloy in the material and not cause it to leach out into the body or have contact with the body. Sixth one is kind of a very important one. And this comes into play with body piercing because body piercing is done in different parts of the area of the body than say a ear piercing would be done in. Um, and why a lot of people are like, I only wear silver. I've never had a problem with silver. Really don't understand why they can't put that in other parts of their body. The thing is, is that as silver tarnishes and erodes, it will leak out what's called silver salts. That silver salts can then be absorbed in the body and lead to silver poisoning or um, argyra. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. And what that condition is, is a permanent blacking or darkening of the area around the piercing or sometimes even uh, anywhere it's had contact with that mucous membrane. This is really, ex these are really acceptable, I, I guess piercings are really acceptable to this would be things like nostril piercings or piercings in the nose, piercings in the mouth, uh, piercings in the genital area, um, some cases even the nipples. Those areas you, I strongly suggest that you do not wear silver jewelry, especially when piercing. Even after the piercing is healed, I wouldn't suggest wearing it in that area, but it might be okay to wear in other areas of the body where it is in a mucous membrane. However, understand that if you start having a reaction to it, it has nothing to do with how the piercing was done, who did the piercing, how you took care of it, or what have you. You're having a reaction to the copper more than likely, or the uh, nickel. So there you go. That's a basic rundown of why silver is such a terrible idea when it comes to piercings. Um, if you have anything to add or you have additional questions about it, please leave a comment. I generally answer them when I can, even if it's an unrelated question. If you enjoyed the video and found it informative, hit uh, that thumbs up and let us know that you liked it because we like it when you like it. If you would like to see more videos in the future with a focus on education, on body piercing, tattooing, and et cetera. We do post roughly about four to five videos a week. Our primary focus is always education. Uh, hit that subscription and click on that notification bell so that you're notified every single time we post something. If you like swag and you're a stylish person and you like to show your pride of, uh, of body art outside of your body art, um, check out our merch store. We have plenty of swag there. Everything from t-shirts and clothing to leggings and all kinds of fun stuff, um, including stickers and tote bags where you can tote things around and your, your, your tote. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. And when I talk about the future, I mean in the future, once this uh, virus has ran its, its track and things return somewhat to normal, uh, what I would ask is that everybody out there practice safe distance and uh, avoid contact and unnecessary trips and all that fun stuff. And of course, wash your damn hands.